Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me now? Hold on just a second. Yeah, okay, you. let's see. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you see me now? Can you see me now? All right. How about now? Okay. Everyone close your eyes if you would. Okay. Can you see me now? Of course not. You got your eyes closed. Open up your eyes. We are talking a little bit about the new future, which is can you see me now? Um, not just can you hear me now? It's called human media. Human media is social media via a webcam. It is the new virtual handshake. And as you're about to learn, it's a new virtual hug. Social media um, essentially is kind of like a tree. This is the Baroque. You guys are probably familiar with that out in Boone County. Big, wide branches that spread out far and wide. And as social media, we are trying to grow our following very, very wide, right? But how many of us are really focusing on the roots, on building our following not only wide but deep? And that's what human media has the ability to do via eye contact. Social media has evolved um, over the years. How many of you guys remember LiveJournal or Friendster? Nope. Um, Orkut. Um, I have some uh, friends in Brazil who actually still use Orkut a lot. Facebook, uh, Twitter, and then Google+. Uh, Google+, is human media, essentially, the new layer of social, where we're not just communicating with individuals via text base. We are chatting with them face-to-face, eyeball-to-eyeball. Uh, human media is essentially group video chat. There are a wide variety um, of types of group video chat. Uh, Hangouts on Air, Zarfor, Uvu, Kiwi, Tiny Chat, Yumble, Airtime. I'm testing one called Zoom as well. Um, I use Hangouts on Air for a variety of reasons. Um, it's essentially a free broadcast suite in the middle of a crowdsourcing tool. This is what it looks like. So there are nine individuals plus the host that are able to join in that conversation in real time. Uh, someone drives the Hangout and you have the ability like a television director uh, to punch between the thumbnails and you can have a conversation with individuals uh, far beyond just chatting with their avatar. Uh, why is this different than traditional social media? And why is human media the new layer of social? It all has to do with time. When you send out a tweet about something, you send it out and then you wait. And if you don't have Google Fiber, you wait even longer. Wait for it, wait for it, and then you get it. It's asynchronous, right? It does not happen in real time. With human media, it is face to face, and it is in real time. This is an Air Force veteran, and I am showing her in real time the Gold Coast um, in Australia. So they are having a, a, a real face to face um, engagement and the ability to talk with each other about those experiences in real time, far beyond texting with someone's avatar. Hangouts on Air are fueling, essentially, a human media movement, and, and there's a reason for that. Because this group video chat room, there are two types of Hangouts on Air. There are a regular Hangout on Air that's private to those 10 people, but, or, I'm sorry, a regular Hangout that's private to those 10 people, and then there's a Hangout on Air which streams live on your YouTube channel. And it's combining Google Plus as the left hand and YouTube as the right hand, GooTube in the future, right? Um, all of this is happening in the middle of a powerful crowdsourcing tool. The largest search engine, right, Google, it combines search with one of the, the largest broadcasting platform in the world, which is YouTube. You are leveraging the power of Google and the power of YouTube via Hangouts on Air. And when you combine that together with face-to-face -face engagement, it really has a new layer of social media that businesses, that charities, that individuals are going to want to watch as far as engagement levels. This was the very first phone book established in February 21st of 1878 in New Haven, Connecticut. And essentially what um, human media is, and human media in the realm of a crowdsourcing tool of a social network, is a reverse telephone book. So back in the day, customers were tasked with the job of going and seeking out businesses in Yellow Pages, right? Now that's been totally flipped on its head where we have reverse telephone books via social networks where those businesses are then able to reach out to those customers via those crowdsourcing tools that are embedded in the social networks and connect with them. And not only connect with them via a text-based avatar, 
they have the ability to connect with them face to face now. Social media via webcams, businesses have the ability to be in their customers' living rooms via webcam. There's also science behind these engagement levels. This is a study um, out of the Scientific American, it was actually an Israeli study, that talks about eye contact and how eye contact quells hostility. You all might have seen this if, if, if you've uh, been involved in the human media movement at all. People are very negative on the text-based comments, but then when you get them into a group video chat room and they're having a human media experience where they are chatting via webcam, all those hostilities peel away. It peels away all of the layers of misunderstanding and there's a deeper level of engagement. People are using this to host virtual career fairs, uh, to find individuals beyond their geographic space in order to bring them in and, and do job interviews and essentially hire them as well. Um, we are also have an endeavor called Veterans Virtual Tours, and we are taking terminally ill and aging World War II veterans to see their memorial in Washington, D.C., in Arlington National Cemetery, in Pearl Harbor, in the D-Day Memorial. And these individuals, they're not able to physically fly, but it doesn't matter, because what human media is, is a magic carpet that can take you around the block or around the world in a matter of seconds. This is Bud Garnett, and Bud Garnett is a World War II veteran, a D-Day veteran in Ladonian, Missouri. He wasn't physically able to travel, he had a heart condition, but he really wanted to see his memorial. He really wanted to go back to the beaches of Normandy and see the cemetery there and say goodbye to his comrades that he lost. He has the ability to do this via human media. It's not asynchronous, it's in real time. Bud Garnett on this day got the opportunity not only to see the beaches of Normandy, but to hear the waves on the beaches of Normandy. That's human media, that's a deeper level of engagement that would happen on any text-based conversation via social media. Military individuals, highly accustomed to group video chat, right? Because they use Skype, um, they use Hangout on Air, they use all these different group video chat rooms and they know how, how to use it. So military individuals are obviously fueling a bubbling up of the human media movement where we are connecting now face to face. Imagine how this story might play out on a text-based social network. You see a picture of it. Um, she has a gold medal in her hand, and individuals have the opportunity to tweet a still picture or tweet a video about it, right? It's asynchronous. But in this opportunity, these individuals have the opportunity not only to see that gold medal, they have the opportunity to ask questions about it and interact about it live. And in fact, one of the questions they asked um, Jamie Gray was, do you wear it in the shower? And the answer was no, uh, but a, a deeper level of engagement than on any text-based post. What human media is, and more specifically Hangouts on Air, because it streams live within YouTube, is a free television station. We all know that to be broadcasters anymore, you don't need a big metal stick, right? You don't need a big metal TV tower. All you need is a webcam and an internet connection in order to be your own broadcaster. Because these Hangouts on Air not only stream live, but they record automatically to your YouTube channel, it has the potential to provide businesses and individuals with the ability to spread their messages far beyond their physical geography. And it's essentially a free broadcast tower. So the human media movement, that is definitely fueling that as well. Also, with the ability to connect with people face to face, you have the ability to have a deeper level of engagement with your key influencers. I'm not necessarily talking just about individuals who have large social media branches that you want to share your content, because um, we all know that there are different spheres of influence. But people who you want to get closer to and you want to develop a closer relationship with them. Um, what happens whenever you want to reach out to one of these key influencers? You might tweet them, you might comment on a post hoping that they will connect with you. Um, sometimes that happens, sometimes that doesn't. What we are finding is that if you can get those key influencers into a hangout, into a group video chat room, and have a face-to-face -face relationship with you, you put yourself essentially around the next doorway to them instead of far away wherever your next state away is. You are reducing the physical space between yourself and your key influencers, which is a huge that bonus. End, that is the end of the media. demonstration. Yeah. Okay. So you you're um, saying, uh, Sarah, that you have people from Toronto and.
That is in, in Quebec, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And the human media yeah. movement yeah. has a huge benefit for journalism. Uh, this is a breaking news event. I was in my kitchen in Columbia, Missouri, and we are covering an event um, in, in Quebec, um, in Canada, where the students are riding there due to some tuition disputes. Um, because you have the ability to be anywhere, essentially it is leading to um, not just live tweeting on breaking news events, but live hanging. So in the future, we will see people with their mobile devices, um, you know, a laptop in the middle. This was um, at a, a demonstration in NATO in, in Chicago. Someone opened up their laptop and had a human media movement there, not just tweeting still pics of what was happening, but live, real time, not just images, but conversation about what was happening. There were other people who joined that hangout and then could ask questions about the riot or about the tuition hikes. Other Canadians were in there. Um, and where was that produced? that was produced from a kitchen in Columbia, Missouri. Geography um, knows no bounds. Project Glass, I have um, the great opportunity to be a part of Project Glass as a Project Glass explorer. How many of you guys have heard um, about Project Glass by a show of hands? Okay, a lot of people, okay? Um, so for $1,500, you too can be a part of Project Glass. I'm saving my pennies as well, really excited about it. And it essentially is a wearable um, computer. This is Alan Furstenberg, and he has glass on. And you are able to control that computer, um, not just in your hand, you know, looking at um, a, a device, but you are in the moment and have the ability to control that device via voice commands. So you would say, okay, Glass, open a Hangout. What will that do? That will essentially put individuals, you know, not just on our devices in our uh, cell phone or in our laptop, it will put our individuals right directly in our field of vision. And what will that do to customer service? Think about that for customer service. If you have online sites and you were able to bring someone in virtually, face-to-face -face in your storefront, uh, maybe you have a thrift store and you bring somebody in and you have a, a, a Project Glass, you have Gla Google Glasses on, and you have the ability to show them point of view, your products and what you are seeing. Imagine how that might change business in the future and deepen engagement levels between businesses and customers. Haven't got mine yet, um, going to be a few more months, and we don't have a whole lot of details as a lot of these individuals are under non-disclosure agreements and can't talk about it a lot. But watch things like Google Glasses and Project Glass fueling the human media movement where we are reducing the physical space between us virtually. Also, the FaceTime generation. This is my daughter, by the way. She's 15. I'm sure she would greatly appreciate knowing that her uh, sleeping picture has been displayed on the screen. But the FaceTime generation, how many of you all know what I mean when I say selfie? How many of you guys know how to take a selfie, right? Okay, some of the younger hands went up. That means a self-portrait, right? They know how to frame it perfectly so that they can take their picture. This generation, the FaceTime generation, highly accustomed to video chat. That, you know, what is this? You know, what is this? What is, you know, um, texting on a social network? Um, they are chatting face to face. So the FaceTime generation will also lead to a bubbling up of the human media movement. There are also a lot of apps that are in these group video chat rooms. Uh, this is Moritz Toxeldorf, an uh, individual who's in Germany, but it doesn't matter. I talk to him all the time, right? Because it's a magic carpet that can take you around the world. Um, he's developed an app uh, that's essentially a virtual business card. So individuals are going from hangout to hangout with a virtual business card underneath them that displays their name, their website, and sometimes their intentions of what they're looking for. So imagine that virtual calling card and that face-to-face -face engagement, one of the things that's leading to the bubbling up of the human media movement. Also games, um, you can play ping pong with individuals and group video chat rooms, and they're finding that these lead to deeper engagement levels and individuals spending more time interacting with their business or their charities or whoever that they would, would want to interact with. So um, apps are coming out all the time, and this is also fueling the human media movement. Social media, in a way, is essentially a game as well. Uh, you want to grow the branches of your social media tree, not only wide, but deep. So I would ask the individuals in this audience, how do you plan to grow the roots of your social media tree? 
Would you rather text with your audience or would you rather talk with your audience face to face? I would argue that the human media movement is opening the eyes of social media. Can you see me now? Thank you.